So since we have seen what big O is, the next important notation is called big theta. This is written as this, right? So this is the theta of something, right? So again, the definition is going to be very, very similar. If you have understood big O, big theta should be straightforward. So I'll try to write diagrams, draw diagram like this and give you some mathematical explanation. It's going to be very, very straightforward, right? So imagine if I have a plot like this, this is my N, right? Suppose if this is my, let's say, if this is my, if this is my, let's say, F of N, right? If this is my F of N, let's say, right? Now comes the fun part. Now let's assume that I have a function. Okay, so let's, let's write down this way. Okay, so, okay, okay, sorry. Let, let me draw it carefully. Okay, so let's assume it's like this and uh, something like this. Okay, let me draw it more carefully. Okay, so let's let's say this is N0. Okay, so let me write this as C1 into G of N and write this as C2 into G of N. So if you notice what we had in the previous diagram is just one curve here, one curve here. What we will have in the case of theta is two curves. So let me write the let me write the statement, right? Then we'll connect just like the last time. Let me write the statement. We'll connect the statement and the graph, right? It says that f of n is theta of g of n. f of n is theta of g of n if and only if. We often write if and only if in mathematics as IFF. Okay, so whenever you see IFF, it means if and only if. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So this means if and only if. Okay, so f of n is equal to theta of g of n if and only if there exists, okay, if and only if there exists two constants, again, just like the three constants here, sorry, there exists n0, c1, and c2 such that I will write such that in a short form such that s dot t means such that I'm just trying to write it in short form here just to save some space such that your zero is less than equal to c1 multiplied by g of n which is less than equal to f of n which is less than equal to c2 into g of n for all for all n greater than equal to n zero Okay, let's, let's go step by step here. What is it saying? Now let's connect the dots, right? So what is it saying here? It says for all n greater than or equal to n0. So we need to have three constants, n0, n0, c1, and c2. I need to have three constants such that for all values of n greater than n0, my f of n, my f of n, is lower than is smaller than so take any value here right your f of n your f of n is here your f of n is less than c2 into g of n c2 into g of n and your f of n is greater than c1 into g of n and c1 into g of n itself is greater than zero right because this curve this see this curve is c1 into g of n this curve is c2 into g of n okay let me not draw two diagram this line is C2 into G of N. So what it's saying here is by just changing the constant slightly. Okay. So different constant. C1 is a different constant from C2. It's saying for one constant, your G C1 into G of N is less than F of N for all values of N. For a different constant C2, right? Your F of N is less than C2 into G of N. This is the definition. Very simple. If this is so, then we say that f of n is theta of g of n. If you think about it intuitively, right, what this is saying here is, this is saying that f of n cannot be greater than c into g n. Right, that's what it's saying. It's just saying this part. Okay, it's saying that f of n is upper bounded by e. Okay, it's upper bound. Okay, f of n can never be greater than c into g of n. This is in the case of order of n. In the case of theta of n, it's saying that f of n for different constants, c1 and c2, is tightly bound. So this we say as tight bound. This we say as tight bound. It's tightly bound on both sides by g of n by just changing the constant slightly. 
here this is upper bound right if you think about it this is upper bounded this is upper bounded in the case of theta sorry in the case of order of n your g of n upper bounds your f of n because it's always above f of n with for some constant c and for some constant n0 in the case of theta this is tight bound your f of n lies between some constant into g of n and some other constant into g of n for all values of n greater than n0 this is the definition of big theta right similarly there is a third metric see look at this this is a tight bound this is an upper bound this is an upper bound there must be a lower bound right so that's where we will introduce something called as big omega that's that's where we introduce something called as a big omega okay this is often written as omega of the omega it's often written as omega like this this is the capital omega in greek alphabet right again the definition is very simple i'll first draw the diagram and we'll crack it right so look at this this way suppose i have my n here right i have my f of n so let's assume this is my f of n right and i have my g of n let's assume my g of n is like this okay some constant into g of n so now again let's write the statement we say that f of n is omega of g of n if and only if there exists if and only if there exists two constants two constants if and only if there exists two constants okay n0 and c such that such that c into g of n is always less than equal to f of n of course this is going to be greater than equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to n0 okay this is exact so here if you notice this is straightforward right you have understood big o and you have understood big theta big omega is straightforward it's simply saying that f of n is lower bounded by because this is always below this right look at this it's always below so it says if there exist two constants n0 and c such that your c into gn your c into gn this curve is always less than equal to fn for all values of n greater than equal to n0 then we say f of n is omega of g of n this is the definition very simple so this is called lower bounding so here this is called lower bounding so what it's saying here intuitively is that your f of n is always going to be greater than or it's always going to be lower bound by g of n some constant into g of n in the case of theta we are saying that it's going to be both lower bound and upper bound or tightly bound by g of n for different constants in the case of big o we are saying that g of n with, with when multiplied with some constant is going to be an upper bound on ffn that that's that's the simple that's the simple definitions and whenever you have to solve any problem or whenever whenever you have to think of all these three whenever you have to think of big o or big theta or big omega my suggestion my suggestion is always to think of these graphs okay these are some of the best explanations i have ever seen in any textbook or any lecture again as i told you i have taken this from the carmen leeserson rivest and stein book one of the best plots i have ever seen to explain the big omega big theta and uh, and and big o very very nice explanations if you remember these diagrams you don't have to remember these statements it's simply about tight bound upper bound and lower bound that's how i remember it very very simple and these diagrams will stay with you for a lifetime trust me